You are always welcome at East Africa's best language school, Swahili Dar Language School in Tanzania. Habari, uh, karibu katika introduction of non-class part 2. Karibu katika sehemu ya pili ya introduction of non-class. Sehemu ya pili uh, part 2. Now, uh, you remember in part 1 we discussed unakumbuka sehemu ya kwanza tuli, we discussed it. Tuli, tuli jadili, jadili, discuss. We discussed about uh, um, these categories uh, in mwa, uh, mi, kivi, jima, enen, and you and non-class. Do you remember that? So, to, now uh, I want to continue uh, explaining how the use of subject prefixes are for things. We have been uh, speaking about subject prefix, the mimi, ni, wewe, u, yeye, a, sisi, tu, nini, m, wa, wa. I, you, he or she, we, you all, and they. We have been speaking about these things over and over, but we focused only for more non classes. We, for more non class, we focused only for people and animals. It, we did not discuss about uh, uh, for things, how these subject prefixes are for things. So this video is to help you to be able to understand and to use eh, the subject prefixes for things. Okay, for one on class, you remember we said this mimi ni, wewe u, yeye a, sisi tu, nini m, wa, wa. And you remember the locate, locative suffixes? Eh? The verb to be in a place, you remember we say that, we don't say a, we say you for uh, when you locate someone when some when we locate someone we say ye ye yuko you remember that if you do not remember that if you do not know how to locate somebody uh, to, or something in a place go watch that verb to be in a place video or locative suffixes kopomo is very important you go study that topic and you come here because you'll get uh, uh, you'll understand it better eh? then how do we say the subject prefix for me non-class me non-class the subject prefix will be u and e eh? u and e this you only need to learn this the me at least in me Every in singular, every word they have the me, have the e voice. Me, e. Eh? And uh, in singular is a mm, mm voice. You remember I told you non class is all about voices. So the mm voice goes with the u voice. So mm, u, mm, u. That voice is very important to understand and to remember every time. It's a, the mm me is u, e. Subject prefixes of me is u e. See that? Remember that. Subject prefix of kv will be kv. That is very easy, man. The same. Kv, kv, subject prefix for this class. And subject prefix for jima, jima. You see, j i here is li. Oh, they are opposite. J i point there, li point there. So, j i. Li and ma ya. You see? Do you see my Y? So it's ya, Y A. So it's L I and Y A. Do you see my Y there? If I give two legs, one leg here and one leg here, it's ma, like there, ma. So if I take away the one leg here and I take away this leg here, is ya. So it's just the li ya. I'm just helping you to remember. I'm just helping you to remember. Huh? So, G ma, G ma will be li ya. You see it? Kivi, kivi. Mi, m, u, m, u, i. U, i for mi. Kivi for kivi. Li ya. You need to remember this, my friend. I'm telling you. 
you trust me need, you need to ah uh, this is nn single and plural are the same so this is easy noun class this is very easy noun class you need to remember the easy this is the easy noun class you see so now you know uh, you know you can tell me you can now tell me uh, how are the subject prefixes for I trust you just tell me and I'll be writing what are the noun classes for things starting from me I trust you just tell me I'll be writing so me will be you remember the voice mm, give the ooh voice me me give the voice kv will be i know you know this the same kv jima will be <laughs> uh, you forget jima you see my j pointed there so it will be of course lee and do you see my ma there jima the ma there uh, did you remove the legs so you have what will you just have one leg see ah the yeah is there so lee yeah and uh, nn oh you, of course you know this nn is easy noun class u n u n is uzi and of course you, you know uzi uzi is one of the word in u n noun class means thread uzi oh that that's gun eh? uzi okay so uzi is uzi subject prefix for u n noun class so this sound is very very important to remember them this one you need to remember them as you remember you can remember the subject prefixes for uh, positive subject prefixes for non class so we are only talking about positive subject prefixes later we'll come with negative subject prefixes okay so now translate uh, for me this sentence mwanangu anaitwa kabelele mwanangu anaitwa kabelele the meaning will be do you remember Mwanangu is what? Pause the video. Write them down. Translate all of them and play it to go with me. Mwanangu is my child or my son or my daughter, of course. Eh? Mwanangu, my son is called Kabelele. Eh? Mwanangu anaitwa Kabelele. Oh, my son's name is Kabelele. That's a true story. Mji unaitwa Mombasa. Mombasa. Mji una itwa Mombasa. Why mji? Of course, why first of all, why here we put a? Ah? Because Mwanangu is him or her for people, him or her, we say we take this one and uh, it's there. Anaitwa. Mji una itwa Mombasa. Why u there? Eh? Why u? Because u mji is me noun class and me noun class in mji goes with u singular so mji u na itwa mombasa the city is called mombasa the city's name is mombasa you see that eh? kijiji kinaitwa nkansi the village name is nkansi so the village is called nkansi so you see for people we say ah when you say him or her he or she um when you say he or she you say ah for things in english is easy you just say it it but for in swahili we have many of them this is you just say it yeah it is called like it is called 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 but in swahili these words will be unaitwa this word will be unai inaitwa kinaitwa vinaitwa linaitwa they are called it is called so it is called they are called in english is easy you just say it they it they it they it they it they in swahili it we say u for all these singular words they is e for all the words it 
is key for all this. For example, when you want to say, the village is called Kijiji Kinaitwa. Villages are called, they are called, Vinaitwa. You see that? Do you understand that? So let's continue translating. Jiji Linaitwa Dar es Salaam. The city Jiji comes from Jima. Linaitwa. Jiji Linaitwa Dar es Salaam. Nchi inaitwa Tanzania. Nchi inaitwa. Nchi where? NN class. Nchi the country. Inaitwa. So nchi inaitwa Tanzania. You see that? Wimbo. Wimbo unaitwa Malaika. Wimbo unaitwa Malaika. I'm the bad singer. I'm the bad singer. I want to call, I want to sing this beautiful song. Malaika. Nina kupenda Malaika. Do you know that song? Go listen. Write Malaika, uh, the song from uh, Miriam Makeba. Ah, wow, it's very beautiful. I recommend you listen to Swahili song. Malaika, very beautiful song from Miriam Makeba. Right, Malaika. Malaika means angel. So the song is called Malaika means angel. The song, Wimbo Unaito Malaika. Malaika means angel. So the song is called Angel. Kitabu Kinatoka Zanzibar. The book is, com is coming from Zanzibar. The book is coming from Zanzibar. Kitabu is the book. Kinatoka, it is coming from Zanzibar. Mpira. Unatoka Nigeria, mpira. Uh, the ball is coming from Nigeria. Rais, anatoka Kenya. The president is coming from Kenya. Gari, linatoka Japan. The car is coming from Japan. You see that? Ha! And keep, keep on translating this way. Mimi niko hapa. How do you say Do you remember ko? Ko from locative suffix? Ko from locative suffixes, every time you place something or someone somewhere, you use this. Eh? When you locate something or somebody somewhere, you use ko. So for I am here, I am here, I am located here, you'll say, Mimi Niko Hapa. See that? Wewe uko marikani. Wewe uko marikani. The meaning of that sentence will be, you are in US. Marikani is US. So you are, I'm, you are, you are located in U.S. Will be, wewe uko, U.S. Mm, yeye yuko Africa. She is in Africa. You don't say yeye ni is, ni Africa. No, yeye yuko Africa. Go watch the Kopomo video. Verb to be in a place. Verb to be in a place video. Locative suffixes is very, very, very important video to, for you to watch. Go watch it if you do not understand here. Yeye, yuko Africa. She's in Africa. Mji uko Kenya. The meaning of this sentence is the town is in Kenya. The town locates in Kenya. Mji uko Kenya. The meaning of this sentence is the town locates in Kenya. Mkate. Uh, Uko mezani, the meaning is the bread is on the table. The bread is on the table. Mgahawa uko karibu na hapa. The restaurant, you remember Mgahawa, Mgahawa, the restaurant is near here. Hapa is here. Kitabu kimo chumbani, the book is now is mo, kimo. Not kiko, like here. Ko, ko, ko. But here is more. Why more? Go watch the locative suffixes video. I told you there, the kopomo video. Hmm? Go watch that video. Verb to be in a place. You will understand why. Because it's inside location. Chumban is in the room. So it's enclosed surface. In, in, inside something. So inside the room. So, ah. Uh, Kitabu kimo chumbani, the book is inside the room. Gari liko nje, the car ko is located outside. The car is outside, you see? You see that? So, mkate uko mezani means, ah, so now I have a simple exercise for you. Uh, can you, can you make this, 
these these sentences in plural eh like a mji uko kenya how do you say the towns are in kenya uh, that will be plural will be miji mi G because mji is a town plural will be miji miji plural of this u will be iko miji iko kenya you see that mkate mkate uko mezani the bread is on the table plural will be mikate mikate because Mkate is one. Many will be mikate. So mikate, the breads are on the table. Mikate iko. Iko mezani. You see that? Mgeawa uko karibu na hapa. How do you say the restaurants are near here? Are located close to here? How do you say that in Swahili? That will be migya hawa. Mi gya how restaurants are located iko near karibu na hapa you see that and how do you say kitabu kimo chumbani books are inside the room how do you say the books vitabu because kitabu is just one book kitabu many will be vitabu vitabu vi mo chumbani say that gari liko nje the car is outside nje means outside so the cars are outside will be magari because gari is a car gari where is it gari is one man will be magari so magari yako nje you see then translate for me these sentences. Dada ana watoto. Pause and write them down. Translate them first. Dada ana watoto sita. Dada ana watoto sita means sister has six children. Sister has six children. Dada ana watoto sita. What the meaning of this sentence? What, what the meaning of this sentence? Nchi ina watu wengi. The country has many people. Kitabu kina kurasa chache. The book has kurasa is many. Kurasa is the page. Eh? So kitabu kina kurasa chache. The book has few pages. Kurasa is pages. So a page will be ukurasa in here in category 2. Kur kurasa Ukurasa is there. So one page will be U, you put U, then Kurasa. So the book has few pages. How do you say the books have few pages? Will be Nyumba ina vyumba vitatu. Nyumba ina vyumba vitatu. The house has three rooms. The house has three rooms. Okay? Simu inaita. The phone, the cell phone is calling. Jiko, clang, 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 clang. The cell phone is calling. Jiko lina vyombo. The kitchen has dishes. The kitchen has dishes. So now, <clears throat> how are we going to make these sentences plural? Eh? Like a Nchi ina watu wengi. That is one country. How do you say the countries have many people? In Swahili will be nchi because nchi is one and many is just nchi. Nchi zina. You see? E plural is z. So nchi zina watu wengi. Many people. Watu wengi. Kitabu kina kurasa chache. Many will be vitabu. Vina. Kurasa chache. Do you see that? Nyumba ina vyumba vitatu. That will be the houses 
have three rooms. Nyumba. Zina. Vyumba. Vitatu. Simu inaita. Many cell phones are calling. How do you say that? Simu. Zinaita. Jiko lina vyombo. Kitchens has dishes. Majiko. Lee is singular. Lee. So probably majiko yana. Vyombo. You see that? So that is how we do. That is how we use these subject prefixes in Swahili. Okay. We have a zoezi here. Tuna zoezi hapa. Tuna zoezi hapa. Eh? Zoezi. How do you translate those sentences? Una uh, tafsirije sentensi hizi. How do you translate these sentences? Una tafsirije sentensi hizi. Uh, the house has six rooms. Will be nyumba in Swahili. Nyumba ina vyumba sita. The school is near the town. Shule iko karibu na mji. Shule iko karibu na mji. The room has a good toilet. Will be chumba. Chumba is what class? Chumba is key non class. Chumba. So chumba kina. Kina cho. Kizuri. Where is the key? Ufunguo. You remember the key? Ufunguo. Where is the key? Ufunguo. Uko. Wapi. Ufunguo. Uko wapi. Where is the key? How do you say the knife is in the kitchen? In Swahili. Kisu. Kimo. Kitchen is inside. Kisu. Kimo. Jikoni. The meeting was good. How do you say this sentence? Mukutano was. Remember? It is like it was. In Swahili, Mukutano is mean on class. Mukutano. So the meeting was good. Mukutano. Ulikua. Ulikua. Mzuri. Fruit are in the market. Matunda. Yako sokoni. Matunda yako sokoni. And how do you say? The tree had few fruit. Mti. Uli. Ulikuwa na matunda machache. Mti ulikuwa na matunda machache. How do you say the president's name is Magufuli? Eh? Rais. Ana itwa. Magufuli. Rais anaitwa Magufuli. That's our president in Tanzania. The city has many cars. Gigi. Gigi is what class? Gigi is Jima. Gigi Lee. <laughs> I'll tell you something. We don't learn this. 
this automatically come in our brain. When you are born, you start speaking Swahili, and this calculation we are doing here is automatically in our brain. So you get a little bit hard to learn, but and later you'll get used to when you practice and practice when you speak your Swahili with people. You'll get them. Just practice and practice. Gigi Lina. Magari Mengi. The university has few students. Chuo Kiku. Where Chuo Kiku belongs? Chuo Kiku is in Kivi non class. So Chuo Kiku Kina. Few students. Wanafunzi. Wachache. The dog is hungry. Mbwa. Mbwa belongs where? Mbwa non class for people and animals. So mbwa is the dog. Mbwa. Ana. Njia. Your house is near the beach. Wow. Do you? <laughs> is it true sentence? Is it? Nyumba. Yako. Iko. Karibu. Na. Beach. In Swahili is. Ufukwe. Ufukwe is the beach. Milk has sugar. Maziwa. Maziwa. Which class is maziwa? Maziwa stays only in plural. No singular for maziwa. Maji, mafuta, and maziwa stays in plural always. No singular. So maziwa, yana, sukari. Maziwa, yana, sukari. You see that? So, I hope this topic was very helpful to you. Ninatumaini somo hili ni msaada kwako. Eh? Somo hili ni msaada kwako? Asante. Asante sana. Endelea kuangalia. Endelea kujifunza kiswahili. Kwa heri, kwa heri.